Hey guys, it's Lucy Kate and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, in today's video, it is my long-awaited Colourpop and Twilight review video. The Colourpop and Twilight collection first came out in January and when they first released the sneak peeks, I was so excited for it. You know, there's not many Twilight collabs that we see nowadays and I really, really wanted to get it, but I didn't feel the need to buy it even though I wanted it deep down because I just have so many eyeshadow palettes and I've been on a low buy. My birthday was in June last month and I caved in and I got the Colourpop Twilight palette for myself as a birthday present and I had it for literally a month and I didn't get around to filming until July so this video is being uploaded one month later than I expected but basically in today's video I'm going to be doing free looks using the Colourpop and Twilight um, eyeshadow palette. So the first look is a smoky grungy look, the second is a bluish look, and then the third look is this look right here. This is the final look I did. This is the green look. So if you're interested in seeing how the Colourpop and Twilight eyeshadow palette works out, definitely keep on watching. I'll put on timestamps so if there's a specific look that you want to see, you can skip towards that. Before we continue the video, if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. I upload all kinds of videos on here to check Get Ready With Me, makeup reviews. Um, I also have a Project Pan series which is very popular on here. So without further ado, let's get into the video. For the Colourpop and Twilight collection, there was more things apart from the eyeshadow palette. So the eyeshadow palette re Details at $24. I myself used a discount code. So there's many YouTubers out there that have discount codes. You can get like 15% off, 20% off. Definitely use one of those codes. So I purchased the eyeshadow palette, but apart from the eyeshadow palette, they first of all they had two Super Shock highlighters. So there was the Vampire Skin Super Shock highlighter and the Meadow Super Shock highlighter. So the Vampire Skin one is a more white icy bluish one I'd say and the metal one is more of like a pink purple tinted one and I in fact did purchase the vampire skin one just because I love super shock highlighters I love the texture of them they're my all-time favorite highlighters and I knew that I would like the vampire skin one so the super shock highlighters retail for ten dollars each um, this one is really it's a really beautiful color it really works well on my pale skin tone love how it looks like but it's such a beautiful creamy texture um if you've used super shock highlighters you'll know they never fail to disappoint you so apart from the super shock highlighters they also came out with free lux lip oils so there is the bells lux lip oil which is a red lip oil there's a team edward lip oil which is a blue based lip oil and a team jacob lux lip oil which is a black based lip oil and these all retailed at $11 each. I personally don't really use lip oils, so I decided to skip on this one. And then they also came out with, I believe, graphic ink liners. And these also came in three shades, Coven, a black one, Vampire, a red one, and Forever, a green one. They're like these glittery eyeliners. They all retail for $10 each. I decided to skip on them as well. So yeah, the main star of the show is, of course, this palette right here. Like I said, it retails for $24. Um, so in total, this has 15 shades. And there is two shades which are glitter shades. So Edward and Immortal are both glitter shades. Again, the swatches will be up on the screen right now. Um, out of all of these 15 shades, I managed to use 13 shades out of this collection. I skipped on the two glitters just because I don't really feel comfortable using them. It's such a beautiful palette. I had so much fun trying it out. Like I said, there's going to be three looks. So we're going to start off with look one, which is a smoky, grungy look. Before we get into the look, so one thing I forgot to mention was um, this palette is mainly based on the first movie, so I do believe that there may be future collabs in the future. So this is just based on Twilight Movie 1. Um, that's why the colors you'll see are very much the Twilight filter, but the filter that is all throughout the movie. So yeah, I know that some people are kind of disappointed with the color theme. Um, they want it to be more red and black to kind of fit the Fit, to kind of fit the book covers, but I myself am personally satisfied with this. If they're planning on doing a palette per each movie, I think that this really fits the theme of the movie well. Even the picture that you see on the top of the palette, like the colors are exactly identical to what you see in this palette down here. So although I don't use these, I don't, although I don't gravitate towards these colors on a daily basis, I really feel that they nailed it spot on when it comes to the color scheme of this eyeshadow palette for the first Twilight movie. Okay, now we're gonna get into look number one, which is a smoky grungy look. Good morning, guys. It is 
Monday morning and I'm going to be doing my first look using the Twilight palette. I got this in the beginning of June as a birthday present and the day today is, I think it's June the 24th today. So yeah, it's been nearly a month. I've just been super busy, had lots of makeup to try out. But we are finally trying out the Twilight palette. So excited. So I'm sure I already mentioned this in the introduction, but I will be doing free looks using the Twilight palette. So obviously I needed to do a blue themed look and a green themed look. But for today, for look one, I'm actually gonna focus on doing a very natural, smoky, sultry glam look. So today we're only gonna use the brown shades and then some of the these shimmers right here. Let's get started. I'm so excited to use this. I've already done my foundation and eyebrows, so we're gonna get started and we're gonna use Say It Out Loud as our base crease shade. There is quite a lot of fallout, but let's apply it on the crease. So excited. It's been ages since I got a new ColourPop palette. I can't remember the last ColourPop palette purchase I made. It might have been the Animal Crossing collaboration. That's probably the last palette I believe I got from them so it's been quite a while but even so Colourpop remains to be one of my favorite brands. So next up we're going to take the shade um, Bella we're going to take the shade Bella and we're going to apply it just in the outer crease and one thing I'm surprised about is there's quite a lot of fallout in the matte shades. Some of my Colourpop palettes have fallout but it's never been this much so I was kind of surprised at that. Actually I'm going to take a different brush but there's so many Colourpop collabs that I've wanted but you know because I have so many palettes I'm like you know I don't need to get them but Twilight was the one that just grasped me <laughs> I just had to get it but to be honest the shimmers are gonna be the main <laughs> part of this look so as you can see it just created a little dimension but I'd say the brown isn't that dark. It's very cool toned brown. I mean, the palette itself is cool toned, but yeah, this is the darkest brown you'll get. So yeah, next up we're gonna use the shimmers and oh my gosh, I'm so stuck on what to use. Like I was thinking of doing Moonlit all over the lid and then a little bit of Forever Young, like on the very outer corners. And then maybe it would be a good like under lash line black eyeliner as well. Let's just take Moonlit and it's like this. Wow, that is a gorgeous shade. I'm just gonna, gonna apply it and see what happens. We're gonna apply it really high up because I do have sort of hooded eyelids, but this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's nice, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a little more subtle than I expected. I don't know if it's just me. Maybe it's because I applied it with my fingers, but it's nice. Um, I do think, however, that I want to add the Forever Young shade on the outer part of the lid. So I'm just going to do the other side and then, yeah, we're probably going to add a little bit of black on the very edge. So yeah, like I said, I'm going to take the Forever Young shade. Um, I'm going to take it with a small brush like this and just actually I'm going to get a flat brush and I'm just going to take a little bit and apply it like on the very edge and see what happens. Oh yeah, I think that is going to be way better. Yeah, that is going to add some dimension to it. And don't worry, I will blend it out. But yeah, today's look is going to be the most simple, natural look I'd say out of all of them because I'm not adding any colors today. Like it was a Monday morning, I didn't feel like doing a colorful look. I'm sure you all get how I feel, but yeah, I was just tired. <laughs> I was just too tired to do, to feel like, you know, doing a colorful look. Yeah, I think I prefer having the black because it adds some, It, like I said, it adds just a little bit of extra shadow to it. And of course I'll be blending it out. And I think for my under lash line, like I was gonna do Forever Young, but I do wanna do eyeliner as well. So I'm just gonna do Bella on the under lash line, I think, because I don't wanna be too dark today. I will be heading to the office after this. So yeah, I'll just blend this side and do the other side and then we'll do the under lash line together. So we're gonna take Bella and we're just gonna run that all under the lash line like that. And this was supposed to be the most natural look out of them all, but it turned out to look very grungy. I mean, not that I don't like it. 
it's just unexpected. So I'm gonna apply eyeliner, mascara, bronzer, highlighter and lips off camera just to save time and then I'll come back to explain what I used. Okay you guys, so the makeup is complete and oh my gosh, like <laughs> I feel so embarrassed, like it feels so bold, like um, I think I've said this in you know multiple of my videos, when I was a teenager I used to do really bold smoky grungy looks, since graduating college I gravitated towards more natural looks, like natural eyeshadow looks, so I just get so embarrassed like when I'm wearing this like bold look, because I know that it doesn't actually suit me the most, yeah I don't know if I can go to the office like this, like it's so bold, like I think I uploaded a chit chat get ready with me like two weeks ago, this look right here, this is like my sultry office glam look. This makeup is like 10 times that. Like it's so bold. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'm contemplating on whether to like get rid of the black before I head to the office. I mean, everyone nowadays is probably in a clean girl phase and not many people do eyeshadow anymore. But I don't know, like, I, I like it, but I'm just kind of shy to go outside with this. But yeah, this is what the look turned out like. So quick rundown on what I used um, on my face. So for my blush, I decided to go with just a very neutral blush. I didn't want to do something too bold because the eyes and the lips itself are very bold. So I used the Flower Nose Chocolate Shop Blush. This is part of my Project Pan series. I'll link my Project Pan playlist down below. We, we will have an update actually tomorrow, so look forward to that. So I just used this blush. And then for highlighter, I went for ColourPop Flexitarian. Again, another Project Pan product of mine. I've used quite a bit of it. I did actually purchase one of the Twilight Super Shock highlighters. This is in Vampire Skin, but I figured this is a very cool toned one. And so I thought I'd try this out when I do my blue eyeshadow and green eyeshadow look. So today I just went for Flexitarian because it's slightly more golden compared to this one. Eyeliner, mascara, I just used some Japanese Can Make products and I'll try and link the products down below because I know I'm terrible at linking products. And then finally for lipstick, so basically in the Twilight collection they released three different lip oils. They had Bella, Team Edward, Team Jacob. I didn't purchase any of them. I've never tried the lip oil formula from Colourpop, it's just I didn't really feel the need. I just really wanted to get the palette, like the palette was the star of the show. I didn't get any lip products, but I decided why not copy the Bella lip oil. So I used this Mood Glow lipstick from Etude House. This is a K-Beauty, it's a Korean product. And I guess it's kind of like a lip oil, but it does dry down to a matte formula. So yeah, what are my thoughts on the first look? I think I did go overboard with the black shade. I think I should have just left it at Moonlit. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. Like I feel like it is a little too bold for my liking. But shadows wise, they worked really well. Um, the mattes went on perfectly. I mean, there was some fallout, as you can see, but everything worked out fine. So performance wise, it's good. It's just my mistake using the black. I mean, I don't know, depending on you guys, you might like the smoky eye look. And like, I don't dislike it. I just feel a little embarrassed to go outside with it. But I don't know, like I do like it though, I have to take some pictures. But yeah, this is look one. So look one was supposed to be a natural look, but it turned out to be a very sultry one. I'll see you guys on another day, and we're going to be doing a blue eye look next, so stay tuned. We are going to film look two using the Twilight palette today, and I can't believe it you guys, it's already Saturday, so I filmed that first look of Monday this week and I had my monthly killer migraines, wasn't able to film so I'm gonna film look two today. I've already done my base makeup, I did some contour, I applied Colourpop Moonchild and look two is just gonna be a basic blue sort of naturalish look. Hopefully not as dark as last time's look. I'm gonna take unconditionally this really pale muted tone right here and I'm gonna apply that in the crease and afterwards I think I'm going to deepen it up with irrevocably, irrevocably sorry, with irrevocably this slightly deeper blue shade down here. I think I'm gonna do a halo look so first of all we'll just put unconditionally in the crease and that's just gonna act as our base color. I don't think this color is gonna pick up that much on my skin tone. We're gonna take irrevocably next and there's a lot of fallout and we're gonna put it on the edge of the eyelid and the inner corner as well. I didn't feel like filming at all today because of my migraine and then it finally started to recover and I felt really guilty because I missed my weekly upload this week and yeah, I just thought why I need to, you know, really get on, tra get on track again with the video filming schedule. 
So that's why I kind of pushed myself to film this. It's currently 5 p.m. and I'm finally ready to film. But this is what it looks like, like that. Let's add a little bit more, I guess. But I might add a shimmer on top of this, we'll see. So we're gonna start taking the shimmer shades and I believe last time I used Forever Young and Moonlit and I do want to save the Prom Night shade for the last green look that I'm gonna film next. So I think I'm gonna take Ice Cold. So I'm gonna take the Ice Cold shade, I'm just gonna take it with my fingers, no setting spray, I'm gonna apply it in the middle of the lid and let's see how it turns out. Okay, that's really nice. It's very subtle, shimmery shade. But again, today's look is just gonna be a subtle, muted, blue, icy toned look. And yeah, I really like what it looks like. I think this would make a really nice inner corner highlight as well. And it would look nice with regular cut creases, like with the brown shades as well. Um, so that's what it looks like. And then next up, I don't know if I should take this shade right here, this blue shimmer shade, and add it on the outer lids. Let's see. Okay, you know what? We, for the sake of trying as many shimmer shades as possible, I'm gonna take the Cullen's shade, this blue shimmer shade, and just apply it on where I apply the blue eyeshadow and see how it turns out. For the under lash line, I'm probably just going to take Irresistible and use it as like an under lash line eyeliner. So I'm going to deepen up the shimmers a little bit more, do the other side, and then we'll come back to do the under lash line together. I think I'm not going to do any black eyeliner today, just do mascara. And after I've applied mascara off camera, there is one more new item from the Twilight collection that I would like to try with you guys. So I didn't use it in the first look, but today's is a very icy blue look, so I think it'll be the perfect occasion to try it out. And the item we're gonna use, you guys, is a Super Shock highlighter. So I'm just gonna go and apply the mascara and we'll come back to try it out together. This is what the eyeshadow look looks like with mascara. And I have to admit, blue isn't usually the color I'd go for, but um, I mean, it's okay, it's nice. I mean, it's not something I choose to wear every day, but I do think it gives Twilight vibes. I got one more product from the Twilight collection, and that is this product right here. So this is the Super Shock Highlighter. They came out with two Super Shock Highlighters in this collection. Um, there was a more pink-toned one, and then there was this one called Vampire Skin. And as the name says, this literally looks like, you know, the skin of the vampires in Twilight. If you watch my videos, my makeup videos, you guys will know that I am obsessed with the Colourpop Super Shock Highlighter. Flexitarian has been my old time favorite. I've gone through like four of those highlighters. Really, really love it. And so I just couldn't resist getting this Super Shock highlighter. So the outside packaging is the same as the Twilight eyeshadow covering, I believe. Let me check. The packaging is the same as the eyeshadow palette cover. Um, it looks the same size to me as my Flexitarian highlighter. I just can't be bothered to get it right now. The packaging is black and it says Colourpop and then it says Twilight. And this is the Vampire Skin Super Shock. Wow, that feels way more creamy than my Flexitarian one. But then again, my Flexitarian one, I've hit pan and I've had it for quite a long time now. I'm just going to swatch it. So depending on the lighting, I think you can see it. But it, oh yeah, now you can see it. It's so nice. Oh my gosh, I love this. And I love the texture of a new Super Shock highlighter. So we're going to apply this on everywhere I usually apply highlighter. And I think I'm gonna apply a little bit in the tear duct as well, but I'm so excited to try it out. Okay, let's try it out on this side. Wow, oh my goodness. Wow, you can already tell just how glistening that highlighter is. It's more pale than Flexitarian, so I think it goes perfect with like these cool tone looks, perfect for like Twilight themed looks. So yeah, with the Super Shock highlighters, I usually just apply them with my fingers, but that is gorgeous. I think it's more subtle than Flexitarian though, but let's apply some on the nose and on the bridge of my nose as well. And on the upper lip. That is really nice. I really like how that turned out. Oh my goodness. Okay. 
Wow, I really love this highlighter. It's so nice. But you can clearly tell that there's a difference. It's a very cool tone highlighter compared to Flexitarian, I would say. So it goes perfect with these blue looks, but this is no Super Shock highlighter. And then this is with the highlighter in the tear duct, but I really like how that turns out. And when it comes to the eyeshadow palette, I do plan on keeping it in my like eyeshadow palette collection. So this isn't going to be an everyday palette. And although I want to do the same for the Super Shock highlighter, because you know, it's Twilight limited edition. With these highlighters, once you open it, it starts to expire basically. So I'd say I'm probably going to have to <laughs> use this on an everyday basis if I don't want to waste it. Even though I want to save it, but I will, I would of course keep the packaging even if I used all of this up. So, okay, I'm gonna quickly do the other side off camera. Well, off camera is in, in Japanese, my Japanese channel. I'm gonna come back to you with my final thoughts for this second look. So I'm back, both sides are complete. And yeah, we're done with the second eyeshadow look using the ColourPop Twilight palette. And the second look was a blue-based look. So it's a very deep, very high contrast compared to the first look that I, sh that I just showed you guys. So the first look I did was like a dark smoky look. Um, it did turn out, it did turn out more dark than expected. So I think depending on the colors, it could have been more natural. And today I just wanted to go with the blue colors that we have. So I do have one more look that I'm going to film and that is going to be a green base look. We have these three green eyeshadow shades that I really want to use. I'm really looking forward to using this, the lion and the lamb shade. I have no green shimmers like this in my entire makeup collection. So yeah, I'm excited to do the third look. Um, my overall thoughts on today's look. So I think that blue, muted blue eyeshadow isn't really a thing that I would do on a daily basis. I don't really like blue eyeshadow to be honest. I think it's one of my least favorite colors. That's why I was kind of nervous going with this look. And at first I have to admit I wasn't liking how it looked. But after applying the Super Shock highlighter in the tear duct, I have to admit that it is starting to grow on me. So I think muted blue eyeshadow looks like this I could maybe do uh, in like the winter season or like Christmas season. Just dark blue I don't really like. And so yeah, I really liked all the shades. I had no problem using them apart from the fact that there was quite a lot of fallout. And I really, really like the irresistible shade, the shade right here that I used in the under lash line. Love how that turned out. Um, I like how it's not too black for like an under eye eyeliner when you're not feeling of going for something that's too smoky. So I definitely will continue using this on a regular basis. And of course the star of today's look, in my opinion, is the Super Shock Highlighter. I absolutely love the Super Shock Highlighters. If you've never bought Colourpop or if you're thinking of making an order, like one item I would recommend to anyone is to purchase a Super Shock Highlighter. Not just the Twilight one. They have so much variety of, you know, Super Shock shades for different skin tones or like cool, cool tones, warm tones. There's bound to be a Super Shock highlighter for anyone and the texture is really what sells it for me. So yeah, this was today's look. As I said, the third and final look is going to be the green, is going to be using the green tones from this eyeshadow palette. And one more thing I want to quickly mention is, um, through these three looks, I will have used all of the eyeshadow shades apart from this shade right here called Edward and then this shade right here called Immortal on the top row. The reason why is because these two are pressed glitters and I don't like to use pressed glitters. Use them at your own risk because, you know, there's risks with using it. Even though I love Colourpop eyeshadow palettes, I've never used pressed glitters from them. So apart from these two shades, we will have successfully used all of the eyeshadow shades by the next final look. So that, so that is it for look two, and I will see you the next day to complete my Colourpop and Twilight eyeshadow palette review and try on. Okay, good morning. So today we're going to be doing look number three using the Twilight palette, and I'm going to do a green eyeshadow, green eyeshadow look today. To begin with, we're going to take this shade right here called 17 and use it as a base crease shade. And we're going to do a cut crease look today using this and then deepen it with the dark green. This is going to be the main color that we'll use today. And for today, I didn't do any face makeup, so we're doing the eye makeup to begin with. 
I'm really excited to use this shade, the Lion and the Lamb. And I think it's like a duochrome shade because depending on the direction that you place it, it looks kind of more darker. Then we're going to take a different brush and we're going to take Impossibly Fast, the dark green, and just add that onto the outer corners. So we've done the two matte shades and next we're going to use the Lion and the Lamb shade and I think I'm just going to take it with my finger so I'm really excited to use this and oh my gosh that is such a gorgeous colour. I've never seen anything like this in my eyeshadow, eyeshadow palette collection so we're going to apply this on the lid and wow I think this is my favourite shade of the entire palette. And because it's a duochrome shade, I believe, depending on the angle, it looks darker and it looks brighter green. But I really like this shade. This is definitely my favorite, favorite shade out of the whole collection. It's something that I don't have in my collection as well, but I really, really like this. So another shade that I wanted to try was this shade right here called Prom Night. So I'm going to take Prom Night and just apply that in the inner corner, the very inner corner. I think out of all the free looks that I've done reviewing the Twilight palette, this is actually my favorite one, I think. I really like how it turned out. It was super easy as well. So this is what the lid is looking like. And I'm going to do the other eye. So what we're going to do is to save time, I'm just going to do all of my face makeup off camera. And then I'm probably going to do my under lash line as well. So for under lash line, I'm thinking of just doing impossibly fast it's like a dark green under lash line and then i'll probably use prom night in the inner part of the under lash line and i'm going to do winged eyeliner as well so i'll just finish all of my face makeup and then i'll come back to share with you my final thoughts not only on this final look but the whole entire twilight eyeshadow palette so here we are with the completed look. This is look number three using the Colourpop and Twilight eyeshadow palette and hands down this is my favorite look out of all the free looks I did. Really really love how the green eyeshadow turned out. So just to give a quick rundown, um, I did my foundation, concealer, powder, contour. I used my favorite K-Beauty ROM and product. I'll try and link all the products I used down below. For highlighter I used I used the Colourpop Twilight Super Shock Highlighter in the Vampire Skin one. I tried this out in my previous look and I decided to use it again today and I also also put a little bit of the vampire skin in my tear duct as well. For under lash line, I basically just took this dark green right here, um, impossibly fast. I used that to apply as an under eyeliner under my lashes, and yeah, I just did a really thin week. I just did a really thin wing eyeliner because I really wanted the green to be the star of the show. So before I give you my overall thoughts on the whole Twilight collection, just my thoughts specifically for look number three. I absolutely love this look. This is hands down my favorite look. I loved the lion and lamb shade. Like the texture of this felt a little different to the other shimmers I'd used previously. I don't know if it's just me, but it's a really good texture. Of course, it's a duochrome, so depending on the direction you face, the color changes. Also really loved prom night as well. And for the sake of this video, I wanted to use as many eyeshadow shades as possible. In fact, I think I use everything apart from these two glitter shades. But to be honest, on a daily basis, like I could just literally pop Lion and the Lamb all over the lid, a little bit of prom light in a tear duct, and I'm good to go. Like I wouldn't even need to use the matte shades. Really, really, really love this palette. Next, I'm going to give you my overall thoughts on reviewing this Twilight Eyeshadow Palette collection. First of all, it was really fun to come up with three different looks. Um, I don't really review that many new eyeshadow palettes on here. Is this a palette I'm gonna pull for my everyday makeup? No, it's not, and that isn't why I purchased it. I purchased it more for the nostalgia. I purchased it for the Twilight collab, if I'm completely honest. It's not because I fell in love 
with the color story but it's just because it was twilight and I wanted it so I caved in and I bought it and this is definitely a palette that's gonna stay in my collection for years more for like as a memory so it's more of like a palette I would display let's just say it's definitely a palette I want to pull out during the autumn seasons and Lion and the Lamb is definitely a shade that I want to use again it's just not a palette for everyday purposes and that's not why I got it but if you're into cool tones, if you're into greens and blues, then this is definitely a palette that you would be able to use every day. It's just, this isn't something I'd use every day and I don't want to use up all the palette. But yeah, when it comes to the Super Shock Highlighter, I loved it. I mean, I knew that I would love this. One, because Super Shock Highlighters, I love the formula. And two, I just knew I would fall in love with this color. So this is a product I will use up because when it comes to Super Shock Highlighters, it's better to use them up before they expire. So yes, this was my video reviewing the Twilight Colourpop eyeshadow palette collection. I know that it's been a long time since it was released. I think it was in January it was released and we're hitting July now. Colourpop releases so much stuff, it's just so hard to keep up. Like the most recent collab that um, I had my eyes on was the Pokemon collab. That was a really cute collab as well. So yeah, it was really fun to try out a new palette and you will definitely see this in more videos. Like I said, for autumn fall themed makeup videos, I'll definitely pull this out. Um, I do have another video where I plan on using this palette as well. So yeah, you'll still see this one and it will definitely be my yearly favorites as well. Like I said, all makeup products I used, I will link down in the description box. Please let me know your thoughts on the Colourpop Twilight collab if you grabbed it as well. Are you still using it um, or do you plan on buying it? for the upcoming autumn season. Also, let me know which look did you like. Look one, my smoky look. Look two, my blue look. And look three, this green look right here. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.